Hey guys! Welcome to my very first video ever. Uh, I'm really excited to start sharing more of behind the scenes, and more of my processes, and more of just my thoughts in general. Um, this is my dog Nymphie, and she's going to be recording with me as much as possible. <laughs> Um, I really hope that you enjoy the photo that I chose to edit today, and I really hope that you enjoy, most of all, the process that it takes me to edit a picture start to finish, and um, to learn what goes into it for me, because the editing process is definitely a part of my artistic flow, and it's really important to me, so uh, here we go! All right, so I have Lightroom open and I have the photo that I wanted to show you. Um, this is the edited version. Um, this is Darwin and Trevor. We got together uh, a week or so ago and I took this picture just for fun. I took a few pictures of him and Darwin together. Um, and. As is very common when I take pictures of animals or kids, um, we move around a lot and sometimes um, we move around faster than um, I change the settings on my camera. So um, I accidentally took this picture with the wrong settings. So this is the original um, and <laughs> obviously I didn't expose properly. There's a lot of like blown out whites uh, and um, there's a lot of detail lost here. And so I really wa wanted to save it because it ended up being a really cute picture. And so I thought I would show you how I would do something like that. And it kind of gives you an insight into um, my goal um, as I edit because I really try to have a light hand when I edit. Um, because I like things to look more true to life and not over processed um, and like how, how it would look if we were really there. So um, the first thing I do is actually um, adjust the exposure because um, it controls a lot of the other things. So. I'm going to decrease it, which is not my norm. I usually don't have to reduce the exposure. I'm usually usually increasing the exposure because I'm shooting um, in lower light situations or something. So um, I'm going to decrease it and see what that's like. Um, I'm going to bring back some of the highlights, um, which you can see in this area, there's quite a lot that's come back. Um, I'm going to go even further and see what that does right there. Um, so I'm going to just show you really quick the difference. This is how we started. Um, and then this is where we're at already. So you can see a lot of detail is already coming back right here, um, which is cool. Um, so then the next thing I do is probably um, just kind of, the blacks are already kind of black, but because it was saturated or overexposed so much, I'm going to bring them down a little bit and then I'm going to give it, I'm going to make it warmer. Um, uh, I'm going to go like around there. That looks really nice to me. So sometimes I have a hard time because I'm like looking at the before and looking at the after and if I go from here to here, sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, that looks so warm. But really, if I'm looking at like other pictures from the session that I've already edited, already had my eyes on for a long time, um, like this one, it looks like it fits in like really well. <laughs> Do you hear an empty snort? <laughs> um, anyway, so I like the way this looks. I'm going to uh, increase the tint a little bit to the pink side, um, maybe like there. I think that brings back a little bit of the, um, I don't know, it leans it toward the blue pinkish sides a little bit more, so it's a little less green, which is nice. Um, 
And then I'm going to see what this does. I increase the contrast just a little bit to kind of make it pop. And let's see. I'm pretty happy with these highlights that I'm getting back in. So I'm going to stick with around there. Um, and then because I'm looking at an animal, I'm going to see what happens with like a little bit of clarity. And sometimes if I want to see what it, what the difference is, I like that. I don't want to go too much because I don't want to make Trevor's face look weird. But I'm going to do that. And then the I also really like to add vibrance. Um, and I'm going to make it pop a little bit. Maybe a little more. So you can see this is before I did that. It's pretty subtle, but I like how it adds little things. So um, I could go even more if I wanted to. You can kind of see it bringing out some of the color in the clothes that's that maybe just seemed black before um, or gray. You can see it adding some color there and into the backgrounds and stuff. So it kind of makes the picture a little more dynamic. Um, if there were some more saturated colors in this picture, you would see it a lot more. Um, so in this picture, I'm not going to do anything with the tone curve. I feel like I, um, addressed a lot of the issues already with like manually ch making changes to the settings. Um, I'm not going to do anything with changing colors because I feel like it's pretty true to how it was in real life. Um, there's no like weird color casting going on. So I'm going to leave that and same with the split toning. I'm pretty happy with it. I don't need to do those things if there's nothing crazy about the picture. Um, Generally, I really like to start um, in the with the sharp, the sharpening being kind of middle ground. You can see already that kind of makes things a little sharper, but not too sharp that it starts to like break. Um, and then I really like adding some noise reduction um, to kind of just going down the middle. Kind of gives me like a a middle ground to start with to see if. I want to add more or take it down a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with um, kind of right down the middle on this. Um, you would be able to tell a lot more if you zoomed in, um, like, so here's before and here's after, and I feel like it smooths things out and it smooths out his fur a little bit, so it's got some things that maybe we can get out later um but so like uh there's before and here's after and it's like just a little sharper but it's not it's not so much uh that it starts to break open like i said and then the noise reduction kind of smooths that out a little bit um so these next two sections are really fun for me because um Sometimes lenses, different lenses add like uh, like a vignette around the picture or they kind of make distortions where it's not really accurate for like how it was actually shot in real life. So um, you probably can't tell because you weren't there, but there is a little bit of distortion that the lens is adding. Um, maybe you can tell if I do this. Can you see when I do that, like, Trevor's body kind of slims a little bit, and that's because the lens is adding a tiny, tiny bit of, like, that fisheye feeling. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, just decrease that a little bit. I'm going to make up for it just the tiniest bit, and I'm going to constrain the crop, which means um, if the picture gets smaller then it's going to automatically crop it for me. So here's before I made those changes and here's after. See it kind of pulls the edges and makes the middle of the picture seem like it's like scooting back. So it gets gets rid of a little bit of like a bulge. And it's like it's really slight in this picture but sometimes especially if someone is standing up um, it kind of makes this not authentic like 
rounder feeling to their body when really they look thinner, they look less, you know, heavy in the center of their bodies. And so that's important to recognize that our lenses do that sometimes. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, uh, because I can see a little bit of the, um, it's called chromatic aberration. Um, so I'm going to enable that because you can see in the highlights of a lot of these trees and things, let's see, um, that there's like some slight greens and pinks. You can see it a lot more if I zoom in on Darwin's face. Um, there's like this, there's like a, sh a shadow or like a halo of like pink or green. It's very subtle on this picture, but sometimes it's really obvious, especially um, when I'm looking at trees and stuff. And it's, it happens to me a lot because I shoot with a lot of, um, you can see it right there, there's like a green, greenness. Um, I shoot with a lot of light a lot of times, um, and like open skies and like full sun. And the sun, when it's like processing through these like trees and like, um, like casting backlit things, it like adds some weird, uh, like, I don't know what they're called. I should probably learn what exactly it is. I just know it does it and this fixes it. So, um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell with me zoomed out, but I just, I, I got rid of some pinks and some greens in those kind of like light castings. And if I zoom in, especially on his nose, um, let it load you'll be able to see it right here especially. Um, kind of come back. Oh yeah, you can see it a lot on his face right here. So that's before. And then that's after. It's like a weird color cast on all the whites and stuff. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, it's pretty subtle on this picture, but sometimes combination of all the subtle changes that you do can uh, make it make the picture just seem better so anyway the last thing I'm going to do is look at the uh, vignetting that I have available um, so this uh, my my lens combined with my camera I feel like automatically adds a really pretty vignette uh, and the vignette is like the shadow around the picture I'm not gonna like go crazy, but I think I want to add just like a little bit more. And like maybe. I don't know. So this is before and this is after, and I think it just adds a little bit of depth right there. I really like this. The last thing I'm going to do is just like get rid of some of these flecks on Darwin's face that aren't his fur. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to bring up this um, spot tool uh, and just like So those are definitely um, like just little things that are on his fur that aren't supposed to be there. He's got a lot of flecks in his face. I'm actually seeing a little bit more of this while I'm in there. I might change that too. He's got some blue cast in his whiskers, which is okay. I could change that to like, it's a little better. Anyway, it's not a big deal. Um, there's like a couple little like, he's got some doggy dandruff get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of one little spot on his eyes just to make sure it doesn't look like he's got eye bogeys. What I'm going to do is zoom back out and see if anything looks weird. That looks pretty good. Um, some of these flecks are natural in him, so I'm just going to double check that they are natural. See, that's like natural doggy doggy fur. So I'm going to leave it. Um, 
because he's just getting old and he's getting some gray hairs on his face. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with this picture, I think. Um, just for, so you can see, here's um, before. We made a lot of changes and here's where we ended up. Pretty happy. I hope you liked seeing it and uh, I'm excited to share some more.